Hello class, this is a PowerPoint presentation of Chapter 3, Financial Statements. This particular PowerPoint presentation, in my opinion, when I just reviewed it, is, is extremely wordy. So when we get to these very wordy slides, I'm going to try to zip through them, and the ones that require more explanation, I'll be able to provide some de further details on that. <clears throat> so, financial statement. Man is also the measurer of all things, measuring by counting, by adding it all up. By taking stock is probably as old as many human as any human activity. In recorded history, there are accounts on clay tablets from ancient Sumeria, dating from about 3700 BC. Since the first shepherd counted his sheep, there has always been accounting. Uh, the learning objectives for this chapter is to distinguish between accrual and cash accounting, compare and contrast the three common financial statements, identify the results shown on the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, explain the calculation and meaning of net worth, and also have a better understanding of how bankruptcy can occur. So this is Luca Pacioli. He was he's considered to be the the father of modern accounting. Um, if if you if you trace back historical text, in my opinion, people have been doing accounting for much longer um, than 1494. But he published a book um, titled Summa di Aritmica, Geometria, Proporzione et Proporzione Alita. And, um, you know, in it, he, he basically just goes over some, um, you know, some problems, um, like work problems, what you would consider today as modern work problems. If you if you have interest in, in reading it, let me know, and I can I can direct you to the, the PDF of, of his book. It's translated into English. So now we have accrual accounting and cash accounting. <clears throat> Accrual accounting are income and expenses when the goods change hands. And cash accounting is income and expenses when the cash changes hands. Okay, so the difference between the two is goods and cash, and that's it. Financial statements will give you three main things. The income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. And they all show different things. The income statement basically shows incomes and expenses. And this is what an income statement looks like. So here we have um, gross wages, which is an, an income, taxes and discussions, and then disposable income here. So her um, Alice's disposable income after taxes is $35,720. And that's what's called her disposable income. Some people also call it discretionary income or discretional income. So you'll hear that term being used interchangeably, disposable, discretionary, and discretional. So don't get confused. They're all the same thing. So then from this $35,720, Alice has to pay rent, which is $10,800 for the year, $3,900 for the food, $3,600 for car expenses, $1,800 for clothing, <clears throat> $1,200 for cell phone, same for internet and cable, uh, entertainment and travel, and the total living expenses for Alice is 25200 Then she also has car loan interest and student loan interest, total interest expense is that much. And then when you work it out and you, you figure the, the income minus the total living expenses and the total cost of interest, the amount of money that she has at the end of the year is $6,040. Okay. So that was the income statement. Now we're moving on to the cash flow statement. And the cash flow statement shows cash in and cash out. Operating, cash in, cash out. Investing, cash in, cash out. And financing, cash in, cash out. It's different from the income statement, however. So that's something to keep in mind. 
And this is Alice's cash flow statement. As you can see, it's been simplified by being divided by cash in and cash out. Um, cash from gross wages of 44650 Cash paid for income taxes and deductions, rent expense, food. And these are all in parentheses because these are all negative <laughs> figures. Car expenses. A clothing, cell phone, internet, cable, TV, entertainment, travel, car loan interest, student loan interest. So then her operating cash flow is this. So if you remember, this was the amount of money that we had um, on the income statement as the, the amount of money that she had remaining at the end of the year. <clears throat> Repayment of the car loan is 2160 Repayment of the student loan, 3480 And these uh, figures, if I'm not mistaken, were not on the other slide. Uh, financing cash flows, which is um, a negative figure, adding these two, will give you 5640 So then the amount of money of cash, net cash flow that Alice has is 400 <laughs> And then lastly, we have the balance sheet. The balance sheet will show your assets, your debt, and your net worth. Okay, so in the balance sheet, the assets are going to equal your debt plus your net worth. Assets minus debt equals your net worth. If your assets are larger than your debts, you have net worth. If your assets are less than your debts, then it says bankruptcy here. I personally disagree. Um, I would put here, it depends. Because if you consider a really high um, type of debt that, that you're going to carry forth for a really long time, like a mortgage or student loans or something like that, you're going to have assets inferior to that amount until you finish paying it off. But the general idea is, is correct that when you, when you are in bankruptcy, your assets ought to be less than your debts to prove it. If you have more money than your debts, then you can afford to pay it. So now we have the balance sheet. We have assets on the left and liabilities on the right. Um, Alice's assets, she has a car worth $5,000. She has 250 in savings. So the total is 5,250. <laughs> she does not own a house. She rents it, so that's not going to go here. Her liabilities, she has the car loan, 2700 This Her student loan is 53000 And the total liabilities, what she owes, is 55700 So her net worth is 50450 So this doesn't typically, this doesn't exactly mean that she's going to go into bankruptcy. It just means that she does not have a, a surplus of net worth. Uh, key takeaways from accounting and financial statements. Three commonly used financial statements are the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. Results for a period are shown on the income statement and the cash flow statement. Current conditions are shown on the balance sheet. The income statement lists income and expenses. Cash flow statement lists three kinds of cash flow, the operating or the recurring cash flow, the financing cash flow or the non-recurring, and the investing cash flow, which is non-recurring. The balance sheet lists assets, liabilities, and net worth. Net worth is equal to assets minus debts. And bankruptcy occurs when there is a negative net worth, when debts are greater than assets. And just to, these are one of the slides that I feel has is very wordy, but I think for the purposes of, of looking forward to, to the exam, it would be a good idea to keep these presentations handy because a lot of information is on here that you're going to need. Hint. Hint. Learning objectives for analyzing financial statements. We're going to trace the design of each common size statement, demonstrate how changes in the balance sheet may be explained by changes on the income and cash flow statements, identify the purposes and uses of ratio analysis, describe the use of comparing financial statements over time, 
explain the use of common size statements in financial analysis. <clears throat> so here we have the common size statement, the income statement, the cash flow statement, and the balance sheet. Common size statement, we are, you'll see items as a percentage. And the income statement, you'll see total income, cash flow statement, total positive cash flows, and the balance sheet will show assets. Expenses and net profit as a percentage of gross wages. So how th this is the, the whole picture of how the income is divided, right? The biggest the biggest ones you can see are the rent expense, right? Um, you can see the income taxes and deductions, net profit. These are the biggest chunks of it. And then you have other small ones, the student loan interest, food, car expenses, and so on and so forth. And this one is a bit smaller. I hope you can see it. Uses of cash as a percentage of total sources of cash. Again, rent expense, income taxes and deductions, cash for repayment of student loans, etc. Beginning balance sheet is where you currently are. Income statement will show what you earned and what it cost you. Cash flow statement, again, cash in, cash out. Ending balance sheet, where you are. I feel like some of these slides are kind of repetitive, so I'm sorry. I didn't design them. Comparing and analyzing financial statements, we have here the ratio, the calculation, and then what it helps to answer. Net income margin is net income divided by total income, and it gives us the answer to the question, how much income is used up by expenses? The return on assets is net income divided by total assets. And it answers the question, how big is the income supporting the assets? Return on net worth is net income divided by net worth. And it answers the question, how big is income relative to net worth? The debt to assets ratio is one that's used a lot in, in, in corporate finance. And it's the total debt divided by total assets. And it helps to answer the question, how much asset value is financed by debt? Or how much asset value is there to satisfy debt? The total debt is total debt divided by net worth, which is how large is debt relative to net worth. Similar to the return on net worth, interest coverage ratio is the income before interest divided by the interest expense. And it helps to answer the question, how well does income cover interest expenses? Cash flow to income ratio is calculated by taking the net cash flow divided by net income. And it helps to answer the question, how much do payments for investments and financing take from income? Cash flow to assets ratio is the net cash flow divided by total assets. And it helps to answer the question, how much cash flow supports assets? <clears throat> and the free cash flow ratio is the free cash flow divided by net cash flow. And it helps answer the question, how much cash is left to invest after cover covering living expenses and debt repayments? Now here's another. Comparing and analyzing financial statements, we have the net income margin ratio, which is calculated by net income divided by total income. Answers the question, how much income is used by expenses? Oh. Bigger as it gets, bigger will be less than one. Bigger will be less than one. Okay, I'll have to revisit that for wording, and we'll let you guys know. Return on assets, net income divided by total assets. ROA. Okay. How big is the income supporting the assets? So it's the same, it's just added. Bigger as it gets, bigger should be should be less than one. Okay, I don't really like how this is worded for you got you all to help explain. So I'll I'll look into this chapter sometime this week, and we'll send you something a little cleaner, um, if if needed. Okay. Comparisons over time. Comparisons over time provide insights into the effects of past financial decisions and changes in circumstance. That insight can guide you in making future financial decisions, particularly in forcing the potential cost or benefit of a choice. 
looking backward can be very helpful in looking forward so you can track the, your progress over time as a company as a person so you can make better decisions in the future key takeaways each financial statement shows a piece of the larger picture financial statement analysis puts the financial statement information in context and so in sharper focus common size statements show the size of each item relative to a common denominator on the income statement each income and expense is shown as a percentage of total income on the cash flow statement each cash flow is shown as a percentage of total positive cash flow on the balance sheet each asset liability and net worth is shown as a percentage of total assets the income statement and cash flow statement explain the changes in the balance sheet over time. Ratio analysis is a way of creating a context by comparing items from different statements. Comparisons made over time can demonstrate the effects of past decisions to better understand the significance of future decisions. And lastly, financial statements should be compared at least annually. For corporations, yes. For us, I mean, I, I would recommend doing it even monthly so that you can track how much money you've spent throughout that month and if you can actually afford to continue um, you know the, the same type of expenses that you're that you're incurring and to see if you can make some changes that'll help you increase your discretionary income <laughs> Uh, learning objectives accounting software identify the uses of personal finance software list the common features of personal finance software demonstrate how actual financial calculations may be accomplished using personal finance software and discuss how personal finance software can assist in your personal financial decisions the um, accounting software will help in collecting data reporting results and also in planning ahead Personal finance software provides convenience and skill for collecting, classifying, sorting, reporting, and securing financial data to better assess your current situation. To help <clears throat> you better evaluate your choices, personal finance software provides calculations for projecting information such as education savings, retirement savings, debt repayment, mortgage repayment, and income and expense budgeting. And I really wish that it would have continued to... to um, give you more details about financial software and list different types of financial software but unfortunately it didn't do that um, but you can search on your own to, to find different types of accounting software or, or, or financial software that can be used like for, for home use not not anything too complex so you can get a better understanding of what these do uh, personally I think the Excel spreadsheet is the best invention in the world when it comes to trying to um, identify your income and your expenses and all that, it's very clean and simple. And if you know how basic usage of, of, uh, of formulas in Excel, it should be relatively easy to do and to track your month-to-month -month income and expenses so you can have a better grasp of your financial future. This concludes the presentation for Chapter 3. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always feel free to email me and I'll be more than happy to assist. Thanks and have a great day.